So 2015, uh, this is a, a lady who had um, a lot of stuff done uh, at another institution. She, she was diagnosed with uh, culture-negative endocarditis. She has a 27 millimeter St. Jude implanted. She has a 25 millimeter aortic root freestyle prosthesis. For, for those who are less familiar with the valve freestyle, it's, it's just the porcine root, okay? Porcine root with the porcine valve. Uh, bovine pericardial patch repair of the uh, intervalvular fibrosa and renal failure requiring dialysis. It was, it was just a terrible endocarditis, but she recovers. So she is back to normal um, uh, for a while. And then she has recurrent endocarditis in May. Um, not a surgical candidate, uh, prolonged antibiotic therapy, so she's referred to us. And she had surgery at Mayo Clinic in 2015 when uh, she has a redo of the mitral valve. So she gets a 29 millimeter Hancock. The aortic root looked actually clean. So it was left in place. So the freestyle stays. And then she had tricuspid valve repair. So for five years, she's, done, she's doing well, including recovery from the uh, dialysis. And she, she's, she's actually quite happy. And then in 2021, uh, in May, June, in that, uh, in that uh, uh, timeline, she has progressive dyspnea um, and presents to the outside emergency department where she has a trans echo. And I was hoping um, to, to enlist the help from, uh, from Jeremy or, or Buzz to, to let us know if it's normal. There's going to be a question about that, so don't get into greater detail, okay? Abnormal. So, abnormal. Buzz, abnormal? Yeah, abnormal. All right, okay. There's some leak. All right, so we see the leakage. Nish knows the case because he, he, was, he was the receiving end. All right, and then this is the apical four. So again, may I, uh, this is actually the, the, I think this probably was done at home. This was the original transthoracic echo she, she had done at home because it's non mayo format with the leventicle in the standard uh, view. So normal, abnormal, looks, a little abnormal. Looks abnormal. I mean, you see the two struts of the uh, prosthetic valve uh, um, there, and then looks abnormal. All right. So some more. So for one reason or another, the, the tricuspid came in a quad format. I don't know. I, I tried real hard to, to separate it, couldn't get it to, to be done. But uh, this is a tricuspid valve repair. So this is the report. Severely reduced LV systolic function, you have 30%. Um, the 25 millimeter metronic freestyle with severe regurgitation. Uh, the biprosthetic mitral valve, mean gradient 6. Mobile echo density on the ventricular aspect. So maybe uh, residual chordal structure and moderate residual tricuspid valve regurgitation. So this is our own transesophageal echocardiogram. So remember, history, culture negative endocarditis first, second episode of culture negative endocarditis. So two surgeries for that, and that's where she's at now. All right, so for those who don't do TE, again, left atrium is at the top as we are in the esophagus. This is the equivalent of the long axis view with the left ventricle somewhere here and the aortic valve here. This is looking like a normally valve, but ex except it's a porcine root, okay? So that's the reason it looks not that different from a native valve. And then, of course, you have the mitral valve bioprosthesis in place. We see there's regurgitation. I'm going to try to show you everything that we got. So we got uh, probably about 250 clips, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, because Nish was speaking on top of my shoulder, and then I thought if I don't do well, I might get a pink slip next week, you know? So, so peer pressure. So look at that. And this is the Doppler um, from the aortic valve gradient from transgastric. That's the best alignment I could get. And again, you see marked abnormality. And, um, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of images on the same place. And the reason for that is really your brain can only concentrate on one image at one time. So, but on occasion, there's, there's reason to do two images on, on, uh, on the same uh, uh, view. And in this particular uh, scenario, you can see we're moving the cursor. Look at the image on the left. So we are going to try to pan through the valve side to side, and that's going to give you the leaflet that you actually do not see. 
All right. So, so the leaflet that you do not see is going to come on the on the other side, on the right panel. So now you can visualize all three leaflets uh, really, rather than just two of them. And we have the 3D and the multiplane 3D. So Jeremy, you do a lot of these, normal or abnormal? Abnormal. Abnormal. Okay. One cusp that doesn't move with something on it. And then for the Doppler, you know, we keep hearing about this. Um, uh, you know, I, I thought it's kind of the, like the, the unicorn, you know, you hear a lot about it, you don't see it all that often. But this time you do see it. What's this? But, so it's mitral inflow, mitral inflow, forward flow to the mitral. Oh, that's me. Let's, uh, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. So let's vote. What does the patient have? Endocarditis of the aortic bioprosthesis, endocarditis of the aortic and mitral bioprosthesis, endocarditis of the aortic and mitral bioprosthesis and perivalvular extension, or bioprosthetic valve degeneration and thrombosis. So three or four. Well, so let's try to sort it out then. Um, one of these days I'm going to get it. I was, I was mean, I, I was mischievous, I, I misbehaved. I didn't show you everything. And the, the part of not showing you everything is the knowledge part. So you need to know about the patient. Remember, that's how you start the assessment. And the part that I didn't share with you is that the intraoperative report from the Mayo surgery five years ago says there is an aneurysm, a pseudo aneurysm of the intervalvular fibrosa. And if you look here, this is the operation from 2015. We have the images because it was done in our center. And if you look here on the left side, that was the original, the, the metronic freestyle root. And you could see this detached part at the intervalvular fibrosa. It expands in systole, and therefore it is for sure a pseudo aneurysm there. And then this is the post bypass. And why was that left in place? It's not because the surgeon wasn't told or the surgeon didn't try. The surgeon did try to do the part. They didn't have access, they couldn't find it, and then they didn't close it. So that's the reason it was left behind. So with that in mind, um, this is the, the part, the, the unicorn part that I was talking uh, with you about. So let not, nobody tell you that I'm not showing M modes. On, once in a while, I am going to show an M mode, and this is the color M mode. This is a short axis with the LVOT and the mitral valve prosthesis. And this is the M mode through that. And what you see here, this is aortic regurgitation, all that. And what you see here, this is the mitral inflow, all that. And what you have there, it's a beautiful demonstration of early closure of the mitral valve, okay? The one that you keep hearing about where the mitral valve closes before the end of the astley, and that was the Doppler that I had earlier on, okay? So this is not a little AR. This is horrendous AR. This is terrible AR. And if you want to look at the CT, we did the CT uh, mainly for, for, for infectious um, uh, part. If you look at the CT, you see again the same thing. There's the pseudoaneurysm right here. And you can see this bendy part of the leaflet. Look at the green, green line crosses through that leaflet. Green line will put you in the green plane here. And you can see the leaflet bends because there's a little tear in that leaflet. So there's torrential aortic regurgitation. So Nish was on the service, and, and he, he was looking at the patient, and the question was, is this infection, yes or no? And you better be sure, because if it's infection, then you need to operate, and if, you, if it's not infection, then maybe you have a percutaneous option uh, available. And uh, the team has done a fabulous job. I went all, all nine yards, and uh, they did a CT angio that doesn't show anything to suggest an abscess. We can see the pseudonyms, but nothing to suggest stranding or anything like that. They saw the, the thrombosis of the mitral valve prosthesis. Uh, PET CT was negative. We did a carrier test, which is a little new. I don't know if many of you know about that. This is the uh, cell-free DNA sampling in the, in the plasma and will be able to pick up infections when you have this so-called culture-negative endocarditis. And that was also negative. So, so we have a lot of reason to think that maybe this patient does not have an infection, just have a degenerated bioprosthesis. So now we put everything together. We know the 
history. We've seen the torn aortic cusp and the, the mitral valve thrombosis. We see the torrential aortic regurgitation. We thought this is the degenerated aortic bioprosthesis and the thrombose mitral bioprosthesis in the context of the valve really all that well in diastole with all that pressure gradient uh, against it. And this is what's, uh, what has been done. So a patient had a transcatheter aortic valve replacement, and you can see immediately after, there's still flow into the pseudo -arnist. no surprise there. We wouldn't expect that to be necessarily covered with, a, with a, a taver skirt, so that's going to stay there. But look what happens when you compare the two short axes side by side. So virtually all the flow in diastole is gone, which is, which is tremendous for this patient. Look at the continuous wave Doppler to the mitral valve. So this was before, ends up way before uh, the, the end systole. Actually, it ends up before the P wave. And then look what happens after that. You regain the forward flow through, through the uh, uh, atrial systole, which was a good thing for the patient. It just happened so she just had a visit uh, in September uh, with her local physician. She's still doing well. She's still not infected. She's off antibiotics. So, so I think we got it. It's, it's a leap of faith to say this wasn't infection, but I think we had enough argument to say it wasn't, and she did well. So what are the conclusions? Again, you need all the information. The knowledge part about the patient, what happened to the patient, was key here. Because if we didn't have that, it really looked, uh, looked concerned, right? Um, and then the caries test was something that perhaps it's new to some of you. Um, we, we haven't uh, started using all that long ago. The change in mitral gradient due to increased diastolic uh, time, and then biprostate valve thrombosis, of course. Uh, I am not going to elaborate on that. It's more common than we think. We treated that. So if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and walks like a duck, sometimes it is not a duck, okay? All right. <laughs> 